glad to have our little Miss Mandy with us today. She's sick this past week, and we were afraid she wasn't going to be able to be with us. But we want to welcome you today to Grace Living Fellowship, Grace Living Online. This is Square One. We are back here at the park, and we are delighted to have you with us here. If you can, come on down and join us. We'd love to have you be with us as we worship the Lord and just bring the good news to the masses of the people here in the Alamogordo Tularosa area. So God bless you and just come on down and be with us and be a part of what God is doing. The Lord loves you and we love you too. Praise the Lord.
Earth has no sorrow, heaven can it be. Earth has no sorrow, that heaven can it be. Lay down your burden, lay down your shame. Oh, who are broken, lift up your face. Sit at the table, come taste of the grace. Rest for the weary, and all that it knew. Earth has no sorrow, that heaven can endure. So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken. Yeah. 
back out here in the park again. We are excited to be here and to be a part of what's going on in Alamogordo, and we want you to come and be a part of what's happening here at Grace Living Fellowship. This is exciting. We've had the, the toy train come by, and we've had the big train come by, and it's kind of hard to compete with those sometimes, but uh, we do our best. And we lift up our praise to the Lord, and we lift up our voices to honor Him, and we just want to share the good news of Jesus Christ with anybody and everybody who happens to come by, and uh, we want you to know that you are always welcome. We, like, I said, like I said last week, there's no walls, there's no doors, uh, there's no barriers, no excuses. We want you to come and be a part of what God is doing here. And so uh, we, we just invite you and welcome you to be here with us at Square One. This is where it all happens, right here at the beginning, right here at the start. Square One. Come and join us here. Amen. Praise God. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles. We're going to go back to uh, Luke chapter 14. Pardon me while I take a drink. We have bottles of water here as well for anybody who comes by. If you're thirsty, we've got some water for you. And we want you to know that we've got, we want to bless you. Like I said last week, we've got a banquet of, of spiritual blessings as well as, as uh, you know, we've got some water here for you. And, and we just want to bless you. And so come on by and be with us. Praise God. Luke chapter 14, we're going to continue right where we left off from last week. This is a, a continuation, if you will. That whole chapter is just an incredible read. Um, but I don't want you to think that it's like one continuous story. It's really not. It's actually kind of several things happening uh, that Luke is describing. And... Among these things, he's described obviously the banquet that he was at, and and uh, how he uh, how he shared that with uh, the parable of the, of the great banquet, and said, "Hey, you know, we're going to invite everybody, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to invite everyone. There's no excuses. Just come on, be here with us. Bring uh, a, a picnic blanket and a, and a picnic, and join us here. There's you know no restrictions, no nothing. Just come on and be a part of it." Um, that's how, we, that's how we work. That's how we operate here at Grace Living Fellowship. But there is a cost to discipleship. And Jesus, later on, as he's kind of walking down the road, he's got this group of people following him. And so as we pick up 25 here, I'm gonna, Luke chapter 14, verse 25, a large crowd was following Jesus, and he turned around and he said to them, he said, if you want to be my disciple. You must, by comparison, hate everyone else. Your father and mother, your wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or, what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers marching against him. And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you can't become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Now, that's a pretty hard scripture to read. We, we don't like to think about the costs. We, we love to think about the free gift. Salvation is a free gift, and it is. There's absolutely nothing that's required for you to receive salvation except to accept the invitation like we talked about last week. Just accept the invitation. Just come to the banquet. The banquet is free. It's set out. It's ready, and, and it's for you to have. But then, immediately after you read that, you hear Jesus say... If you want to be my disciple, it's going to cost you. 
And he says some pretty harsh things here. I mean, he says, if you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, not literally hate your father and your mother and everyone else, even your own life. He's saying by comparison, in comparison to your desire to be my disciple, everything else must be at that same level of hate that says, I, 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 I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ more than I want anything else. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ more than I want to, to be with my parents, more than I want to be with my spouse, more than I want to be with my children, more than I want to be with my siblings, more than I even want to live, I want to be with Jesus Christ. And, I, and, and some people, you know, when a church says, hey, if you want to be a member of the church, you've got to pay your tithes and you've got to be faithful at least 47 weeks out of the year. You know, some of us are going, whoa, that's just that's too much to ask. I can't do that. This is Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you're going to have to pay a higher price. You're going to have to be willing to give up everything that you own. That's how he concludes this passage of Scripture. He says, you're going to have to be willing to give up everything. Take up your cross is probably the most familiar phrase out of this entire passage of Scripture. Take up your cross and follow me. Because in verse 27, he says, if you don't, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you can't be my disciple. Those are not my words. I didn't say them. I didn't write them down. I didn't call them scripture. I'm, I'm just reading them for you. You read them for yourself. This is the cost. When you come to the banquet, when you come and receive the invitation, it's free for you to have. But when you get up from that banquet, when you get up from that, from that feast, when you get up from that altar, having received the invitation of Jesus Christ, you then say and commit yourself to say, I will be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I will take up my own cross. And I will follow Him. I once did a teaching for teenagers, oh, back in the in the mid '90s, um, called "A Hundred Percent," and I still have I still have the book somewhere in my library. Uh, and they had they had a section called "No Padded Crosses," and, and literally, it you know, <laughs> we often think that when we come to Christ, it's going to be easy, it's going to be a bed of roses, it's going to be fine, and it's. It actually turns out to be quite the opposite. It's a completely different expectation. When you come to Christ, it's, life is not going to be easy. It's going to be a requirement to take up a cross. And it's not a padded cross. It's not, it's not an easy chair cross. I have a picture of an easy chair cross that somebody made in Photoshop that I sometimes will put up on my Facebook. Every once in a while, just to remind myself, the cross is not an easy chair. It's not a recliner. It's not a barca lounger. I can't sit down in the cross and just put my feet up and say, Ah, I've made it. It's comfy. It's fine. That's not Christianity. And if that is your flavor of Christianity, I'm sorry. You have what I like to call spiritual diabetes. Because you have something that is not real. You have a sugar-coated Christianity that is sickening and disgusting and will still lead you straight to hell. Jesus never said it was going to be easy. Jesus never said following him was going to be smooth. In fact, he said quite the opposite. He said that the way to heaven, the way to, to, to eternity with him is straight and narrow. That word straight does not mean it's straight like, like going up a straight line. It's straight meaning that it is, it is narrow and, and, and sometimes uh, twisting and winding, but it is, it is always leading in a 
similar direction. It's not an easy path as opposed to the wide path that leads to destruction. It's a harsh way. And I don't want to deceive you. I don't want to sit here and say, you know, grace, grace, grace. I mean, that's that's the name of our church, Grace Living Fellowship. We're living in grace. But I don't want you to think that grace is just the be-all, end-all and that you can now suddenly just go out and do whatever you want to do because there is a price. There is a cost. And we have to have a balanced view of this thing. We have to see, yes, grace draws us. Grace brings us. Grace enables us to walk in His light. But we have to pick up the cross. And we have to leave everything else behind and follow Him. And He talks about the cost. He says there's going to be a cost don't start until you recognize the cost. For some people, it's a cost of family. It is a cost of family. You may come from a very, very, very interconnected family. And your family may not be believers. Your family may not be Christians. And for you to accept Christ and for you to become a Christian and to walk in His way, it may mean that you have to tell your mother and your father, I love you and I respect you, but I have to choose Christ. I have to follow Christ. And that means I have to stop coming to family events. It means I have to stop coming to all of these things where, where, where you promote alcohol and you promote drug use or whatever the case may be. It may be a cost of friends. For some people, it may be that you have to walk away from friends that you've had all of your life. You may have to say to them, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to walk away. I can't hang out with you anymore. The things that you do, the words that you say, the lifestyle that you live keeps me from being able to walk in the way that Christ wants me to walk in. It keeps me from taking up my cross and following Him. I have to walk away. And you say, Brother Petty, I can't, I can't believe you would say that. I can't believe that you would want us to, to willingly abandon our family, abandon our friends. If they're keeping you from living for Christ, yes, I would say that. Because living for Christ is so much more important than anything in this world. Is there a price to pay? Is there a cost? Yes, yes, there is. And you have to ask yourself, am I willing to pay it? You have to say, is living for eternity with Christ more than living for the moment in this world? And you have to weigh that in the balance. And I have to say this, there are some people listening to me right now. Whether you're listening in this park or whether you're listening on the internet, you are making the choice right now to say, my choice is to live in the moment, to live in this world for the moment because my family and my friends and my pleasures are more to me than Christ. And, and, and I can't stop you from making that choice. I can't stop you from making that decision. That is your call. But I can also tell you that where it's going to end you up is not going to be something that you're going to enjoy. So you better enjoy what you have while you have it because when you end up where you're going to end up, you're not going to have any pleasures. You're not going to have any joy. Bible tells us very clearly that the wages of sin, although pleasurable for the moment, for the season, 
is death. Sin is going to come and it's going to ask for its paycheck. Sin is going to come someday and it's going to say, you owe me. Your death is the only thing that is going to satisfy the sins that you have committed and you have garnered and you have spent your time playing with. God has offered a gift of eternal life. And yes, it is free to any who believe. All you have to do is say, I accept it. I believe it. I want eternal life. But when you accept that free gift, you say, I will pay the price to walk in that new life. I will give up the old life. I will give up the old man. I will take off the old nature. Scripture says these words over and over and over again. It says when you become a new creation in Christ, you will literally take off the old man and put on the new. Behold, all things are new, the Bible says. The old is passed away. The person you were before, the person that you were when you were in your sins, is gone. And you now live a new life. And that new life is to take up a cross and follow after Christ. Not a physical cross. Not a cross that you can see somebody walking down the street carrying on their back. Although some people have done that. What I'm talking about is a cross of spiritualness. A cross that says, I will nail my flesh to the cross. My personal desires, my personal wants, my personal uh, needs as far as my, my flesh is concerned is nailed to the cross. My relationships as far as my family, my spouse, my children, my co-workers, all of that is nailed to the cross. It's crucified there. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, my favorite verse, literally has gotten me through life since I was a teenager. It's one of the verses that draw, drew me back to Christ when I walked away. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. It's not me that's alive. I'm dead. I'm crucified. I'm carrying my cross that says, I'm the one who hangs here. And the person that you see living, the person that you see moving, the person that you hear speaking is Christ in me. And that cross that I carry every once in a while, that guy that's hanging there, that old dead man, that old sinful fleshly nature, he, he tries to raise back up and he tries to come back to life in me. And he tries to say, hey, you want to go back and do the things you used to do. You want to go back into alcohol. You want to go back into pornography. You want to go back into sin. And I have to crucify him and take that cross and keep him on it. That's the price that has to be paid. If I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, I have to, by comparison, hate my own life. And yeah, that sounds hard. It sounds difficult. It sounds like that's something I can't do. And you say, Pastor Petty, I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if that's something that I can handle. You're right, you can't. You can't do that. End of discussion. Close the books. Let's get done. We've counted the cost. You're 10000 going out against 20000 Not going to happen. But he says, you go and you send a negotiator. There's a negotiator. The Bible says that there has been a spirit 
the Holy Spirit has been given as a negotiator, as an advocate on your behalf. Through the Holy Spirit, we have been given the ability to live as holy lives before God. With the Holy Spirit, we can keep the old man crucified. With the Holy Spirit, we can be disciples of Jesus Christ. Living faithfully for Him. Following Him. Taking up our cross. Even if we have to leave mother and father behind. Even if we have to leave brother and sister behind. Even if we have to leave our families behind. And that's a hard thing to think about. You think, man, how, how can I do that with the Holy Ghost? You can still be in the same house. You can still live under the same roof. But you can say, I choose Christ over their influence. I choose Him over what they say and how they influence my life. That's how the Holy Spirit can give you the ability to sustain your discipleship and your walk. You see, we talk about grace, but then there's that word living. We have to be living. Every day. Every day life. That's the discipleship part. You think we chose this name just by accident? No, we didn't choose this name by accident. Grace living. Not living grace. It's grace living. Why? Because grace brings us into the life that God wants us to have. But it's the discipleship of living every day that's made possible by His grace. The cost of discipleship. And you say, but is it worth it? Is it worth it? Oh, let me tell you something. It is so worth it. I've been clean and sober now for 30 years. Haven't touched a drop of alcohol. Haven't touched a cigarette. Haven't looked at pornography. Haven't been involved in any of that for over 30 years now. My life is so much better than it was. I can't imagine where my life would be if I'd still been in that. Probably in a gutter somewhere, if not dead from cirrhosis of the liver. I cannot imagine where my life would be if I had stayed there. My life is so much better now. And it's not even the best life yet. Don't listen to those guys with big fake smiles writing books and say you can have your best life now. My best life is yet to come. Amen. Because there is coming a day when the eastern sky is going to be split wide open and the Jesus that I have loved, the Jesus who died for me, the Jesus who gave His all to save my soul is going to step out in those clouds and He is going to call my name. And I am going to rise up, whether I am in the grave or still alive, I am going to rise up to meet Him in the sky. And the Bible says, so shall I ever be with my Lord and Savior. That's the first day of the best days of my life. Amen. Is it worth it? Oh, yes, it's worth it. The price that I have to pay in this life will be more than compensated when I step over into the next life. That's right. There's an old song that the church used to sing and we need to start singing it again because the truth behind that song is so powerful. My understanding of the way, the way that that song was written was it was written when, when the man who wrote the song was actually being tortured And he saw his wife and his children set on fire and burned. 
because he would not renounce his faith in Jesus Christ. And he wrote the words to this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. When you have made up your mind, when you have said, I have decided to follow Jesus, even though it would cost me everything, even though it would cost me my life, my wife, my children, my parents, my friends, my job, my house, my 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 everything I have decided to take up that cross and follow Jesus and never turn back never turn back you will find that the glory that awaits you is exponentially greater than anything that this world has to offer. The cost of discipleship is great, but the reward of discipleship is greater. As we close, can we just sing that song? We'll just sing it a cappella. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Oh, I have decided to follow Jesus. 
I have decided to be his disciple. To take up that cross and to follow him. If you've made that decision today, if you've listened to this message and you've said, I have decided, Pastor, I'm going to follow. I'm going to make that choice. Would you let us know? You can write to us. You can make a comment below this video or you can email us at info at gracelivingfellowship.org or you can write me personally at pastor at gracelivingfellowship.org or we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear that you've made that decision to follow Christ and be His disciple. That you've made that decision to live for Him and to take up your cross and follow after Him. God bless you. Know that we love you and God loves you. We look forward to talking to you again real soon. God bless you. you cannot be my disciple. As you were talking about counting the cost and, and leaving family and friends behind, I was reminded of the um, missionary. I um, can't remember his first name, but Elliot, I think, was the last Jim name. Jim Elliot. And um, he went to rainforests. And the Amazon rainforest in, in uh, South America. And he um, was there to to uh, spread the gospel to an unreached people group. And he and his fellow missionaries that went with him were um, brutally slaughtered. But when he went, he said, do you remember the quote? We'll look it up. Yeah, we'll, look we'll, it up. we'll put right. it on there. Um, but, but the other thing is, you know, he... He left his family behind, you know, knowing the possibility of of losing himself yeah. in that. And then turn around after he has lost his life and and he and his friend his fellow missionaries and friends have sacrificed and have given, you know, the utmost for the for the gospel turn around here not very long afterwards and his wife and the other missionaries' wives and their children are then asked to go to these very same people who brutally slaughtered their, their loved one. And again, it was no sacrifice for them. Because of um, the sacrifice that Christ had made, and so they counted it as nothing, as as Paul would say, and and his son then had to face that. Do I want the revenge for my father and and for what happened to him more than I want to reach the lost for Christ? And in the end, he made that choice to reach the lost and 
and he became such close friends with the man who killed his father. And and they went and um, spread the gospel together around the world. Yes. And so, you know, powerful. It's powerful. it's um, if you can get a hold of the movie, it's it's amazing. Read the book. This, this, the lives of these people is just incredible. But the point is not so much to promote to promote this as it is for us to understand when the, when the Bible is asking us to by comparison hate remember that you know it's not it's not a true hate it is that anything that I have anything that I could possibly want anything that holds any value to me could not be by any measure, be more valuable than the cross of Christ. Could not be more valuable than the sacrifice he made for me. Could not be more important. And so I willingly, I gladly give up all of those things. All of them. For his sake. And in doing so, am rewarded with so much more. And um, I just, I, as like I said, as I was sitting there, I was remembering the, the lives of these men and, and seeing how, by comparison, I hate my father. While I gave up my revenge, I gave up my, my animosity towards his murderer. It, it, it is, it's a powerful thing. It's a, it's a very powerful thing that, you know, God can take those things that we would think were more important and He can make them seem like nothing to us. And, and it's not that we don't care. Of course we care. We're human. God made us human. He gave us emotion. But He... He also gave us the capability to forgive and to choose an active will to forgive and to leave things um, behind that would hinder us from the rewards that he has. And so what waits for us is beyond comprehension. Okay. There, there's literally nothing that can be described to to prepare us for what heaven is going to be like. And to, well. to, to hold on to this world which we see decaying, we see falling apart, we see mm -hmm. riven yeah. with strife and, and conflict, why would we want to do that? I mean, when when heaven is... The, the best description that's given is that it's a place where the streets are literally paved with gold, and the gates of the city are made out of single pearls, and the walls are, are multiple levels of, of precious stones, and, you know, why, why wouldn't we want to go there? Why wouldn't we want to, to, to be in, in that... Um, at that level of reward and you know it, it's almost a no-brainer uh, I heard one preacher say you know he was talking to an atheist and he said if what you believe is if what you believe is true and what I believe is wrong and I die and there's nothing afterwards what have I lost by living my entire life to be a good person to to you know, preach peace and love and, and all these kind of things. And the atheist said, nothing. He said, okay, well, let's turn it around. He said, what if everything that I believe is true and everything that you believe is false? What have you lost if you die and find out that there really is a heaven and there really is a hell? And, you know, it, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's a no-brainer. There, there is a reward. There is there is a, a, a prize to be won. I mean, I'm not trying to 
to be silly, I just I just thought to be a little silly about it. Um, first of all, um, the the scripture tells us that we join Christ on white horses, and it also says He doesn't take back gifts. So if He's going to give us a horse to come riding in on, we get to keep it. Um, no, so I, I said I was going to be silly. Um, also, you know, we're going to get mansion. He says, I'm building you a mansion. Well, you know, what can you imagine as a mansion? All right. And then I, I remember this joke uh, somebody told. This guy, you know, passed away and he, and he died. And he takes a suitcase full of gold up, up with him to heaven. And, and he gets to the pearly gates. And they always say it's St. Peter waiting there. It is not right. But anyway. Um, and he says, so, um, you know, can I come in? I want to bring, I want to bring this. And they open the, the suitcase and they're like, you brought pavement. I mean, think about it. Gold in heaven is so common. It's asphalt. It's concrete. It's dirt, basically. And so when we when we think of of heaven, I mean, just imagine it that gold is as common as dirt. It's, it's beyond. It's like I said. It's beyond comprehension. It's beyond description. And so when the question is asked, is it worth it? Is it worth the cost of discipleship? Oh yes. Oh yes. It's definitely worth it because at the end of it all, and I, I have I have been. I was there at the passing of my late wife. I was there at the passing of my mother. Um, the moment that they stepped over into eternity and the joy that flooded their hearts, you could see it. You could see it and, and you knew, you know, that there was something, there was something that was worth it on the other side. And so, you know, I can only encourage everyone, it's worth the cost. Make the choice. Take the take the take the plunge, um, and, and and choose to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Choose to follow Him, and contact us. Let us know. Write to us. Make a comment down below this video. Uh, email us. Uh, we'd love to get in touch with you and and talk to you more about it and help you along this path. Um, that's what we're here to do. We're here to to love you through and love you home. And, and help you in every way that we can as far as your walk with Christ is concerned. So let us know, get in touch with us. God bless you, and thanks for tuning in.